coming through in the chat, feel free to give us a greeting. Let us know where you're joining from. It looks like we have folks from all over today. Hi, everyone. I always love seeing those. How wonderful. Perfect. Well, it looks like our numbers are starting to slow down a little bit, and we have lots of great information to get through in this next hour together. So I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to today's webinar, Hot Topic Meets Workers Where They Are, a Workplace Wellness Case Study. My name is Jackie Zimmerman. I'm the Manager of Public Education Partnerships and E-Learning at Mental Health America's National Office, and I'll be helping to moderate today's webinar. I have just a few notes before I introduce our presenters. This webinar is being recorded and will be emailed out to all registrants within one week. We currently do not offer CEUs, but if you would like to request a certificate of attendance, we have a link that you can fill out to do that. I'll post it in the chat here shortly, and that will also be included in your follow-up email. Please post any questions you have for our speakers in the chat today. We'll be collecting those as the session goes on and have some time at the end for some Q&A. In addition, attendees who complete the post-webinar survey, survey will receive a 10% promotion code to use in the MHA store. So we strongly encourage you to complete that survey. That will be sent out via email along with the recording within one week. Which leads me to introduce our speakers for today. With us, we have Taylor Adams, the Director of Workplace Mental Health at MHA's National Office, and also Susie Craig, the Vice President of Workplace Mental Health at MHA's National Office. Welcome, Susie and Taylor. Taylor Adams spearheads MHA's efforts on its Bell Seal for Workplace Mental Health National Employer Recognition Program and its Mind the Workplace research. Susie Craig leads the strategic design and future direction of MHA's workplace mental health programs. Susie brings more than 20 years of experience leading strategic planning and entrepreneurial efforts, partnership and program development, and marketing and communications. Welcome, Taylor and Susie. We are so thrilled to have you both here today to share more about the new Workplace Wellness Resource Center and to hear about what top, hot topic has been focusing on surrounding workplace mental health. I will hand it over to Taylor and let you take it away. Great. Thank you so much. Um, hopefully you can hear me. So I'm going to sit a little closer so you can hear me okay. Um, I get the first 10 minutes to talk about uh, some of the new resources that we have come out today with the support of Hot Topic and the Hot Topic Foundation. Um, this first slide here, uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about why workplace mental health is important. Um, because I think all of you that are joining here today have an interest, a passion, a, or a colleague forwarded this to you, or you were just interested in some way, um, and know that it's an important topic. Um, but this is just some of the things I wanted to share in terms of the visual on the screen. Uh, I apologize, it's very small font. It's just meant to be like a, a what it looks like, just a visual. Um, and everything that I have featured on the slides can be found um, on both our website and 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 the we have the links in the slides as well that'll be shared. Um, but yeah, with that, I just wanted to give a little bit of background on MHA's approach to this topic and kind of why we embarked on this project that I'll introduce. Um, but one thing that I've said on previous webinars, if you've heard it before, um, addressing mental health uh, isn't in the workplace. Isn't just about the one in five people who live with a mental health condition each year. Um, but it's about all workers who need to be supported by a supportive and psychologically safe workplace. Um, so we really, uh, some of our aims are to understand what are some of those disparities, what contributes to poor worker mental health, um, how do we advance uh, some of the practices that we know are based in research that do support workers, what are companies doing now and examples of that, um, and then develop resources. So we'll talk a little bit about each of those today. So before we jump in, um, I know we have a very active chat, which I love. Um, so this isn't a poll. This is just if you're willing to share and feel comfortable um, and want to answer the question, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, but you know, this asks, how would you describe your organization's efforts to support workers' well mental well-being? 
Um, absolutely no judgment here. Wherever you are, I'd love to hear kind of some of the things that your organization is doing. Um, from a personal you know, perspective of being at Mental Health America, I've been here for six and a half years. Um, and when I first started, it was a group of 20 of us. And now we've doubled in size. And I think we're up to 40 something. And um, along with that shift in size, it's really had a shift in the culture. We also went from a primarily in-person work environment to now a uh, hybrid and, and remote work environment. Um, I'm actually in England right now for, for my husband's job. So um, I have that opportunity because of uh, what Mental Health America offers. But basically just uh, seeing the evolution of MHA from when I first started to where they are now, especially in the last two years in which they focused a lot on developing our culture and trying to get us to still feel connected, even though we are in all different parts of uh, the country and, and the world. Feel free, drop in the chat. I do, I think we have the ability to save the chat and I do go back and look at it after. Um, greatly appreciate it. All right, so I'm really excited to introduce this uh, project that we're working on and just launching today. So um, we just uh, put together our Workplace Wellness Resource Center. Um, and if any of you are familiar with last year's 2022 toolkit, the visual that I have on the screen here is from that. Um, but we take a lot of uh, the content and kind of repurpose and reimagine it in a way to expand this as part of a, uh, the resource center online. So um, some of the things, you know, it still includes the same free kind of downloadable resources, but we've really expanded on some of the content. It's geared towards uh, employers, leaders, HR professionals, those who work within the DEI space, people managers, um, those who are just, you know, workers advocating for mental health in the workplace. Uh, and we have all types of things like email templates, infographics, um, checklists. Another exciting thing is we just released our uh, 2023 Mind the Workplace research, which really looked at different dimensions of a worker's identity and how that impacts their mental health in a workplace context. Um, so there's uh, a lot of great key findings and some of the recommendations that we have for employers that are also can be found on this site. Um, as well as our Bell Seal National um, Employer Recognition Program, uh, we have a couple of briefs for benchmarking for organizations that are tracking their, their progress, um, as well as a few employer case studies, which today's uh, conversations focus will be the one that we did with um, Hot Topic and was also published um, today. So I think Jackie's dropping some links in the chat. This is just the main uh, link to the whole hub if you want to go and kind of explore and see what's a part of it. Um, I wanted to briefly share how we broke down these like buckets, particularly for our four employer section. So based on um, our analysis of like 270 plus organizations, their policies, practices, different programs that they do um, to contribute to better worker uh, mental health and well-being, uh, we kind of narrowed it down to these four buckets or groups, categories, whatever you want to call them, um, of where an organization is at in their workplace mental health journey or evolution. Um, so one of these first buckets is kind of organizations that are just getting started. And um, these are employers or groups that are, the main focus is kind of just inspiring the conversation um, about mental health in the workplace, reducing the stigma, increasing mental health awareness. Um, and this is often done through uh, internal communications, organizing events, um, trying to garner, you know, basically get buy-in for why this topic is so important from leadership and, and your workforce. Um, so some of the tools that we have as part of this section are, you know, an infographic for making the case, all the stats you need in one place to, to, to be able to present your case, um, whether you're asking for a small budget to bring in a speaker or, you know, whatever activities that you're looking for. Um, we have email templates just to promote mental health awareness, printable posters and postcards to, um, promote online mental health screening. It has a QR code, so people don't have to, you know, do that within the workplace. They can take those cards home and then scan the QR code and, and be able to take that in the comfort of their home. Um, as well as a calendar for all uh, 2024 national, national mental health observances. So if you are planning your, your year, uh, I think we have a resource linked to almost every single event that we have on that calendar. Um, so a lot of these tools are good for, uh, are a great starting point for organizations that are look, looking to um, start that conversation within their workplace. And again, everything that I have on the screen is um, 
items that we feature and are, are downloadable for free um, on, uh, on the site there. And then moving on to uh, the second kind of category. So we call this leveling up your uh, current support. So maybe you have a really good uh, foundation. You've, you've got um, support from maybe leadership or from other folks uh, within, within your workplace that are interested in talking more about mental health, um, improving things for workers in the workplace. Uh, so usually we see organizations that are addressing factors that directly impact workers' mental health. So things like enforcing um, fair and effective people management is a really key component, uh, promoting inclusive uh, practices and equity in their everyday operations, um, and at this point having a little bit more support and participation from leaders and workers. Uh, so just some examples of things that you can download um, for free on the site. We have an infographic on educating managers about emotional intelligence, kind of like a um, it's like emotional intelligence do's and don'ts. So it'll give you a scenario and you can kind of see how different things play out and the interactions that um, managers have with their um, direct reports. There's postcards that can be printed. One of my favorite resources on this section has to be um, the leadership support uh, letter. So um, if you are looking to get some type of budget, you want to start an affinity group, an employee resource group, um, we put together the language of like, here's the financial cost of ignoring mental health in your workplace, um, in addition to here's why it's important for other reasons, and you can just copy and paste and use that as um, a tool. And I feel like I'm breezing through it, but I'm just really excited about our conversation, so I'm trying to, trying to keep it succinct. Um, and then three, the third category that we have as part of our, our four employer section is around in, uh, investing in benefits and other offerings. Um, so really, the key word here is investment. So we we did, you know, for this kind of round, is focus on uh, benefits and other support. But this is really when you have leadership and kind of all hands on deck, kind of supporting this initiative within your workplace. Um, but the uh, things we focused on was really around ensuring things like health plans and other benefits because those tend to be the more costly things, um, support or meet workers and their families' mental health needs. Um, so some examples that we have here is just a couple things around educating or encouraging employees to, you know, know what their benefits are, know what to take advantage of, um, encouraging people to take time off uh, for their well-being as well as you know, solutions if people feel like that's not feasible is, is all part of that that template. Um, and then uh, a checklist on ask your benefits provider these 22 questions or your EAP provider. Um, and this is just like a snapshot of what's on available <laughs> on the site. There's a lot more that we have here. Um, but that's kind of our third bucket where you're really investing more in these types of, of things. And then our final thing here is becoming a, a thought leader. Um, uh, these employers are the ones that are really setting the example for others. They're the ones where we're writing employee, you know, employer case studies about. Um, they're kind of leading this workplace mental health movement by trying different things and um, having a really robust strategy in, in doing so. Um, so I would say organizations that fall into this group, they assess their workforce's needs. Um, they develop a broad organizational mental health strategy in response to what those needs are. Um, and then they implement change that are driven by worker feedback and what they and what they say. Um, so again, some of the things to download here are um, we have suggested workplace mental health uh, survey items. If you are implementing a survey within your workplace, um, we have a framework on how to develop a mental health strategy and start thinking about that. And then we have uh, loads of examples of what we've seen from other companies and organizations um, do within their own workplace in response to employee feedback. So this is really where the focus of the conversation is because we're going to be talking to Hot Topic, who I <laughs> know falls in this category. Um, and before I hand it off to Susie, just one last thing I wanted to share for the chat. Uh, so I, I know I just mentioned a bunch of uh, different types of resources, but um, what would be helpful for your workplace mental health efforts? Uh, and this could be specific topics. This could be a type of resource. Um, again, I go back and read all the chat. So I'd love to hear uh, what would be useful for you. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Susie. Thank you so much, Taylor. Um, so much work went into the Workplace Wellness Resource Center, including 
a huge effort by Taylor and our team. So I just want to thank them for all of their hard work and, and really excited to be a part of this. Uh, thrilled to have this conversation and uh, lead this conversation with Joe and Derek. Um, let's call this a, a real-time live case study, if you will. Um, I think Jackie put this in the chat, but I'll put it in there again. We have this um, really amazing case study and story to share about all of the wonderful work that um, Joe and Derek and their team are doing um, to create this incredibly uh, supportive culture at, at Hot Topic. I'm a huge fan of Hot Topic. I shop there as a teen and now I bring my teenagers there. So um, I, I just, I love them as a company and I've only been at Mental Health America since June. So it was wonderful to come into um, my organization and then get to know them and really understand you know, everything that they're putting in place to support their team, which is, um, so it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we get to share today. So Joe Emery uh, is Director of Human Resources at Hot Topic, Box Lunch in her universe, all under the Hot Topic um, brand. Joe has been um, in human resources for 40 years, so he might, you know, he knows a thing or two when it comes to HR. Um, and I love having conversations with him because I learn something new every day um, when I when I talk to Joe. So I'm really happy to have you here, Joe. And Derek has over 10 years of experience as a district manager for Hot Topic. He has many, many years of experience in retail. And I think he has some past lives beyond retail that also gives him incredibly wise, insightful information. Always a great conversation talking with Derek as well. Derek oversees 14 stores in greater LA and Hawaii. I'm not sure how often you get to Hawaii, but I'm, I hopefully, you know, you get there often. I think sounds like a great, um, <laughs> great job to have for sure. So welcome to you both. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I did put the case study in in the in the chat, and we have a, a bunch of questions we're going to start digging into. But I really wanted to start with a personal question. So personally, why is worker wellness, worker health, and investing time and energy in that important to you each as people? Joe, if you want to go first. Okay, I'll, I guess I will start. Thank you, Derek. <laughs> um, for me personally, it is because um, I was bullied as a child. I don't usually tell that story very often, but I was. And it took me a long time to come to grips with my own self-confidence. I wasn't really self-confident until I was in my 30s. And so I know how it feels, number one. And I understand that uh, and truly believe that if a person is totally well and encompasses all wellness in the workplace and they're happy where they work, they can be more productive and more successful. So for me, I've been in Hot Topic for 23 years, almost 23 years, it'll be 23 years, January 2nd. Um, it's it's my home. It's my place. I feel comfortable. You can be our, your authentic self there or here. And that's important to me as well. And I think I said that to you, Susan, when we were talking originally, you can show up and be your authentic self. There's no, you don't have to, to be something that you're not. And I can't pretend. And I think that um, I'm not a good actor. I tried doing little theater in college. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. But um, so I, it, it's a very personal thing for me because I understand and I feel it. And I want to make sure that people are comfortable in the workplace. I truly do. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's important we share that per those personal stories, right? So people, mm -hmm. you know, know where we're coming from. So thank and you. Nothing to be ashamed of, I, you know, and nothing yeah. to be ashamed of. And I think that's why I love Mental Health America because you know it's hashtag before stage four, and you want to get that stigma away from it. And that's one of the things that attracted me to your organization. So there you have it. Yeah, uh, Susie, I think for me, uh, similar to Joe, I think everybody has their own mental health journey. And I think everybody's journey is unique uh, and special to them. Uh, with that being said, I, you know, um, you know, I'm not very open about this all the time, but I've dealt with my fair share of anxiety, crippling thoughts, intrusive thoughts, you know, being in work environments that were not empathetic to that we're not understanding to that and subsequently the downward the downward spiral that can inevitably lead to um employees within your workplace where you don't really care about them and what that ultimately means for them um i know what it's like to be impacted and 
I, you know, there were moments within my career earlier on, earlier on in my, you know, professional career where, you know, sometimes people don't always feel comfortable coming to you and, you know, disclosing all this information about themselves. And I think had I had a leader where there was a little bit more authenticity, there was a little bit more honesty and trust and transparency. Um, I think that there could have been impactful strides to, you know, intervene, so to speak, with whatever mental health or whatever I was going through at that moment. So for me personally, I know what it's like to go through that. Um, I also know what it's like when you do have leaders that do care about you and how that ultimately impacts you. And I know I made a commitment to myself personally where I was never going to create that type of work environment for my people. That is entirely within my control. And I'm never going to create those types of uninclusive work environments where people cannot come up, you know, come as themselves, be open and honest and transparent and, you know, not have a, a trusting and caring foundation that we can build upon. So it is very personal to me. And I understand, you know, the impact it has on employees when they have a supportive work environment and when people care about them like i see how that impacts everybody um so uh, you know that's what i always strive for it's personal to me and um it's something i'm very passionate about well thank you both so much for um you know really answering that question from a place of personal experience and authenticity and and just you know showing up here in this discussion in that way i think it's so important um, I also struggle with anxiety and depression, ADHD, and it's a huge reason why I'm at Mental Health America and also having the people in my team, you know, we're a small team of just over 40 people, but the, you know, the culture of support and, and amazing humans that they are when they show up, um, is really half the reason why I'm here as well, you know? Um, and I also want to geek out a little bit. So and match those personal stories and experiences with some data. I know Taylor shared, um, and I think Jackie put the link into our, our research that we're launching today. Um, it's really important to also understand and have the numbers so that organizations know that this, this is not nice to have work, right? This is essential work. This is, mm -hmm. this should be essential to who you are as an organization, right? So this one particular stat I put in, which I think is really stunning, workers who feel that their identity and perspectives are valued by leadership report higher rates of psychological safety. Of those who feel valued by leadership, three in four workers feel emotionally and mentally safe in their workplace at 76%. They report that their workplace takes direct actions to address discrimination, 73%, and would recommend their workplace to their peers, again, 76%. So I think that to me is kind of, you know, a clear defining, like, yes, this is important. Um, one thing that I'm really fascinated with when it comes to Hot Topic is you're over 9,000 employees, almost, you know, uh, 700 locations, been around for almost 35 years. Uh, Wikipedia describes you as a specializing in counterculture clothing and accessories, which is pretty fascinating. I know Joe's like, oh, I don't know, fascinating term counterculture. But anyways, um, it's more it's more fandom now that I think <laughs> counterculture. But sure, we'll go with that for a minute. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and, and also, so those are the business tests, and also you are certified in the Bell Center for Work. <laughs> place for mm -hmm. mental health from mental health America. And one thing that, you know, another reason why I'm here is that it's a very rigorous national certification. Not even 25% of companies who apply make the cut, right? You know, we're really proud of that fact. We want to make sure if we're certifying an organization that are they're living and breathing and walking the talk. So can Joe, maybe you can start and just help us understand how do you balance the business and understand that you're also um, you know, you're a, you're a bunch of 9,000 plus humans. Yeah. Ellie Keller just put something in the chat that, um, really is going to be my answer. Um, it is, of course we have an EAP like many companies do, and it does cover mental health. Um, we've expanded that from three sessions now, I think to six coming up on the new year, which I think is, is very important. Um, also something to talk about that hasn't really been published yet. So we'll keep it amongst ourselves, the 274 people that are here. 
is that we are going to provide um, some mental health help to folks that are non-benefited because obviously out of 9,000 people, we have many part-time employees that aren't fully benefited. Mm -hmm. So one of the, one of the tasks that I've been given and our benefits program has been given and, and uh, Janet and Jocelyn have been great with this um, is to find a way to put some wellness dollars behind providing at least a, a tier one area of mental health support for those who aren't benefited. And we hope that we publish it in PR enough <clears throat> And people do understand that it is completely private and we don't know who's going to be calling that will get a lot of use out of it because it's very, it's very important to me because it is something that it, it, it is hard, you know, to, to, to get people to call the EAP sometimes. I mean, I've had right. folks who want to come and have me counsel them. And although I love to counsel and mentor and coach, I'm not a mental health expert. You know, I took psychology classes in college a million years ago. And so I can help them get through the day-to-day -day at work, but I really can't help them as a therapist or, you know, mental health professional would. Um, so I always try to point them, you know, to the to the individuals. Something else that I don't know that people are aware of, that if you go into our stores and sometimes we're out of them, we give out little mental health cards, which I think is really cool. It was my idea. So I will take credit for that. because I think it's such a great idea. I think all organizations should do it. Because in mental health, we have a proprietary URL with Mental Health America that directs people to. We have the Trevor Project, we have the Suicide Prevention Hotline, we have the Warm Line, and we just give those out. And we go through those cards like crazy. I will send, we'll send stores, all stores across the country, 500 cards that are out within a couple of weeks. So there is a need for it, obviously. So it's something else we do for our customers and our employees as well. So I hope I answered your question correctly. So I lost track of it, I think. <laughs> okay, thank you. It goes where it needs to go. I think what you shared is is really fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Derek, any thoughts? I have a more philosophical answer and psychological approach to, um, to this. Obviously, the business goals and the employees, um, it all goes hand in hand. It's kind of like the yin and the, and, and the yang of it all. I like to break it down into what do people want when they join an organization, you know, when people sign up to join Hot Topic or quite frankly, any organization, what is the ultimate goal? And I think as we get further into the 21st century, I think this ideology of purpose and having a purpose within the workplace and within the organization um, is way more prevalent than it was earlier on. People found purpose in other reasons outside of work, but now people are going into work and looking for some sort of purpose, you know, um, this, you know, kind of narrative of being an obedient worker will only get you so far, okay? And if that's what we're striving for is obedient workers, well, unfortunately, you're only going to be, you're going to cap yourself off. So what I really strive for is creativity. When you strive for creativity and collaboration, it will lead to purpose and it will what that will essentially do is if the purpose of the business is to make money and to be more profitable, okay, um, that's what, you know, by all, by all accounts, that's what the intention of a business is. How do we get people to be excited about that proposition? Okay. And there's within Hot Topic, there's a multitude of creative outlooks that we give our employees in terms of their visual merchandising, in terms of the people that they hire and, and, and this, that, and the other this, that, and the other. There's a lot of creative outlook and autonomy that they have to running their business. Um, I don't box people in. Um, un I heard this quote and it really, it was really fascinating to me, but uncreative behavior and learning, um, uncreative behavior um, um, thinking and learning is taught. And if you have un a uncreative behavior that's something that you've learned over the period of time i don't want to box people in the more creative we can make people the more autonomy we can give our people the more purpose they're going to have in the workplace and the more they're going to want to strive to beat their goals you should see how excited my people get when they have great conversion or when they have you know they they beat their sales plan it's because they did the work they did the creative uh you know problem solving in order to have better conversion in order to have a better ADT. It doesn't need to be like the workplace versus the business. It can all go hand in hand and it can all be fun. And there's a way to do that. And there's a healthy way to do that. Um, 
And I think a lot of that has to do with autonomy and, you know, creative freedom. Obviously there's boundaries, you know, you don't just hand over the keys of the car, right? Um, there's boundaries, but uh, I find that a, if you really want to get people to where you need them to be, you want to leave them with their autonomy. You want to be authentic. Uh, you want to be collaborative and you certainly want to be creative. Absolutely. And so to that end, Eric, can you share a little bit? There's a there's a great uh, example story you have of, of um, you know, one of your store managers in the case study. Can you share that yeah. uh, with yeah. everyone? I think it's just a great example. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I had a store manager who worked for me for a period of time. Um, she was somebody that I inherited from, pre uh, from prior leadership. And um, I, I think she's one of... She's one of those employees who, regardless of who she's working for, regardless of what situation she's in, she's going to show up and she's going to handle her business. She's going to be a pro. Okay. Th there's not many people who, you know, based upon their work environment, who can still perform at that level. She was able to, but you can only sustain that for a certain period of time. And, you know, when I finally inherited her and was able to just kind of, you know, break down the walls that had been established by prior leadership and really get through to her, you know, and not in a, in, 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 in a way that was intended to be anything other than just productive, um, but building health, um, building a healthy relationship with her, building a trusting relationship with her, transparency, um, giving her a platform, and I think this is important, uh, especially in leadership, giving her the platform to give me feedback, okay? And I can tell you that was very difficult. <laughs> that was very difficult at, at, at the beginning. Um, and I just started small. I literally would just ask her, what do you think of this? You know, what do you think of this license? Do you think this is a good license we should have in Hot Topic? And it would just start small. And I would build up to, what do you think I can do better? Because I think oftentimes as leaders, we, it, I think they, it's like teacher student. And that is just not the dynamic I'm trying to create at all. Um, I understand that different managers require different things. And I, there's not just a one, a one size fits all approach to people. And they have to be willing to bring forth, you know, their concerns, you know, whether it be about you, the business or whatever else. And I think I used this example with you, Susie, about, you know, the inside out characters. And, um, you know, if you think about it from that perspective, you know, if you're a leader that gives off the perception of anger, disgust, you know, sadness or fear, is that really the atmosphere? Is that really, you know, I, I guess the platform in which people are going to want to bring information to you. I, I I don't think so. Um, and not to say that you want to lean into joy, um, but is joy someone that you could go up and have a conversation with? I would say yes. Okay. Um, so it's important to me to understand that communication is a two-way street. Feedback is a two-way street. In order for me to get better as a leader, I need to be able to listen to my people. And subsequently, my people need to be able to listen to me. And they need to understand that the feedback is coming from an authentic and honest place. Um, and since we've established this type of rapport, her work performance has just gone through the roof. And not only that, you want to know, you want to know the beauty of it all is that she now trains and develops future leaders for this organization who have the same mentality and who have this, the same expectations that I have, that she has. And now it's just... It's like compound interest. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, that's it's such an amazing example, and you know it really speaks to something that Mental Health America finds all the time when we're talking to organizations. And when organizations are worried about employee retention, worried about the business side, you know, um, I don't care what business you're in, we're all in the business of human resources and <laughs> robots fully mm -hmm. take over, right? So you know. Um, just understanding that what I hear from what you're saying is you have played the long game around. How can I build trust? How do I, how do I find a way to support 
my people. And I'm sure it looks different depending on, you know, which store manager, which team member you're working mm -hmm. with, but how do I build trust? How do I create that environment so they can do their best work, you know? Right. Um, and Joe, I, one thing that I absolutely love about Hot Topic, and you talk about this all the time, is, you know, part of who you are as an organization is um, creating an environment where folks can show up who they are, right? And being yes. very overt about that, right? There's a lot of organizations mm -hmm. trying to create a DEI program out there, right? They're really kind of behind it, you know, and it's great that they're doing that, all right? You don't, you know, we want to make sure that folks are prioritizing and put, investing in that. And the, <clears throat> the time and point that we're finding right now is that's great that you have started to do that. And now it's time to, Go to the next level, which means really making sure that this is a part of your <clears throat> DNA as an organization. Mm -hmm. It's not just a program. It's not just a training. It's not just a policy, right? So right. talk to me a little bit about how to Hot Topic shows up in, in this area. Oh, my God. This is a two-day conversation. I could do a whole training <laughs> program on this. Yeah. Um, and I, maybe someday I will because I think it's very <laughs> interesting. I was going to – I think, first of all, um, and I'm going to add on what Derek said just briefly – People need to feel that they're cared about in an organization. If you feel that you're cared about in an organization, you will perform better. You will stay longer. You'll be happy. You'll perform. As Derek said, you've developed that relationship with this, with this manager. You would need to be cared about. I've stayed with Hot Topic for 23 years. As, well, that's one of the reasons, actually, to be honest with you. But, you know, and I, as I say, I wasn't here at the beginning when the company started, but we were the first company that made it okay to have green hair and tattoos and piercings and work in the mall. And I said that, you know, in our, in our preview, and I talk about that all the time when I'm doing presentations to different organizations, we were that company that made it okay to, to show up as your authentic self. And I think that is just so important to be able to do that. And that comes from the top that came from the top back in the day. It comes from the top today from our CEO, Steve Rains, who's a huge believer in having people be happy in the workplace. He talks about that a lot. He is the best CEO I've ever worked with. I will say that to all these folks that are listening because he understands the business side of it and he understands what propels the business side, which is the people, of course. You know, he, he gets that. Many CEOs do not get that because it's all about making the money. And I get that too. We're in business to make money. We understand that. But he understands how to do that through his people, which is monumental. But showing up as your, we don't have to pretend to be somebody and people that have pretended to be something other than they are don't work out well at hot topic mm. they just don't they don't get the fandom you know we have dress up days in our stores as derek knows and people dress up for just it's saturday let's pick up the and dress up <laughs> mm -hmm. they do that <laughs> doesn't have to be halloween or christmas or a holiday they just do that that's pretty cool that people are able to you know nerd out or freak out or whatever geek out on their fandom you know, my corporate uniform, I'm not wearing a Hot Topic t-shirt today, um, but that's my corporate uniform, a Hot Topic t-shirt, basically, and jeans. That's what I wear every single day. You know, that's that's the deal. And so you show up as your authentic self, and that is actually prided here and propelled here. As I've said to uh, working with the Trevor Project, and I will say this, and I don't have any stats behind it, so please, in the chat, don't ask me for this. We're probably the largest... Um, employer of the LGBTQ plus community in the country, besides Disney, percentage wise, I will say that. Sure. And I sit on many advisory boards and I talk about that a lot um, because you can be here and be yourself. And if people are not treated respectfully by other employees or customers with customers, we say shop somewhere else or shop online. You cannot be disrespectful to our folks here. We talk about that a lot. And Derek knows that mm -hmm. uh, as well. It's not just a mantra we talk about. We want our people to be respected. So they show up as their authentic selves and they may be dressed a little differently one day, but they still need to be treated with dignity and respect, just like you're shopping at Neiman's or Saks Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people forget that because they're shopping in Hot Topic and it's fun and cool and can be a little bit rowdy and we play loud music. We love all that, but the same level of respect should be shown to our people and our people in the organization as anyone else. And we show customers that same level of respect as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope I answered your question as well again, because I get up on these tangents, I apologize. <laughs> I love the tangents. <laughs> tangents are my favorite, you know? <laughs> tangents in my world, tangents are just like, you know, if it's it's on the top of your, your head, then it's like, it's the important thing you want to get out there. So 
Um, so I thank you for sharing all that. Um, you know, one thing that I've come to know about Hot Topic too is you really walk the talk in the community. So the fact that the Hot Topic Foundation in 2022 gave out $2.4 million in grants um, is amazing. And that's to support music initiatives and Sorry if you heard my dog <laughs> um, <laughs> and Zoom life, you know, yeah. um, and uh, amazing support for mental health programs, um, including Mental Health America. And thank you for mentioning the Trevor Project, which is an amazing, you know, shout out to the Trevor Project, which is an amazing organization. Um, and for us, you know, the support has enabled, um, I think it's well over this number now, but over 100,000 people to um, take Mental Health America's uh, anonymous online screenings, um, which ultimately helps them identify, you know, where their mental health is at and then, and then direct them to, you know, to support that they need. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, either Derek in the stores or Joe, you know, why is that piece important too? You're supporting your, your, your comp, you know, your employees and it's part of who you are. And also, you know, you have a commitment to community, you know, and you mentioned the cards, which is really important to have in the store. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that, what is that like to be, you know, working at an organization that's really community focused? Well, the community piece for me is um, it's become a godsend to be honest with you. Um, the community are our customers and our employees. So we have yeah. to support the community. So I'll, I'll go on first for just a couple of minutes, Derek, and then please chime in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we support, um, I support, we support the found through the foundation, through the West San Gabriel Boys and Girls Club, their mental health uh, bus. They have a, a, they have a mobile unit that goes around as well as our music organization. Uh, and we've done that now for many, many years. And they're just down the street from our, from our company. So we support you know, big organizations like Music Will and Mental Health America, Notes for Notes, Trevor Project, but there's all these other smaller organizations. I have been on the board of, I'm, I, I sit on many advisory boards, Covenant House. I have a huge passion for foster kids and we donate a lot of merchandise. So it's not just money. Last year alone, we probably gave out, and I don't have a number around this, so please don't ask me in the chat to give you specific numbers, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise to Covenant House, Boys and Girls Club, all different organizations across the country that reach out, you know, whether it's a, a raffle or whatever, because we know the community is so important. And uh, we do that with a very, I do that. We send out boxes all the time. We pay for the postage. We do the whole bit because it's just the right thing to do. When I sit on uh, the Youth of the Year, which is one of my favorite programs, the Boys and Girls Club, it's all minority kids up there, you know, and they give these speeches, which are just so compact. Well, they bring me to tears most of the time. I put my sunglasses on because I start crying. I'm very emotional, <laughs> as Derek knows. <clears throat> you see me cry in front of, you know, 500 people. Um, it's why we give, love you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But, you know, it's it's giving back. And I take such pride in, you know, uh, you know, being the chair of or being a, a judge for uh, youth of the year to make sure those kids are getting, uh, you know, scholarships later for college. And I've mentored many of them, or I mentor foster kids. You know, the, the community work is so important. And we have employees that reach all the time and say, Joe, what can I volunteer for? What do I need to do? Blah, blah, blah. And I would say, find something you're passionate about in the community and volunteer, you know, or, you know, talk to your DM and donate some, uh, some merchandise. Or if you need merchandise, we probably can send you some because we have tons of samples. Um, so we really want to work with the community because the community are our people, you know, they're, they're the customers and they're our employees. And I think when you're a great community partner, you're viewed well, and it's a statistic and there's been a lot of research on this, that employees want to work for companies that are viewed well, you know, mm -hmm. and are respected in the community. And I think Hot Topic is one of those organizations. Any thoughts, yeah. And we're yeah, going to pretty quickly into the Q and A. So but yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm. Just, I'll be quick. I think just number one, first and foremost, is just not smart business practice. Like if you're, it's just not smart business practice. And I think secondarily, I think for me in Hot Topic, I, there's too many examples where Hot Topic has really been a safe haven and a trusting environment for a lot of my employees. And I think the fact that a lot of employees seek refuge at Hot Topic. And then not only just our employees, a lot of, you know, customers who shop with us also seek some refuge in terms of shopping with Hot Topic. And 
we've always been this brand that's prided ourselves on uh, on being this de destination for both our employees and um and our customers that by not creating this sense of community and by not creating this inclusive environment for everybody it's just not a smart business practice and i've seen too many examples of employees who have started with me you know bright eyed and bushy tailed you know wondering what they're going to do with their life only to end up being some of the best store managers and quite frankly, district managers. And I think, man, if we had not been that type type of environment, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, what would have happened to this? For, I don't know. And I certainly don't ever want to find out or put myself in a, in a situation where that would be the ultimate outcome. So um, it's something I pride myself on. Again, it's smart business practice all the way around. And when people are are in those types of environments that they have a sense of community and they have a sense of purpose, it just lean, leads to long-term sustainability and profitability. So I'll leave it at that. I, I think that's a great place to leave it. You know, we'll put a pin in, in that, you know, I don't ever want to know, <laughs> right, the <laughs> negative outcomes. Right. We're just going to go forward and, and do the best we can and support people as, as much as we can to make sure right. that you don't find yourself there. So right. thank you both so much. Um, so let's see, it's 147. I think I did good, right, Jackie? And I think we can jump into some Q&A um, yeah. and kind of let the discussion go from there. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Susie. And thank you, Derek and Joe. Um, that was a wonderful dialogue. I know there's lots of um, great feedback in the chat. I told you not to worry about looking in there, but I'll definitely want to share it with you afterwards because um, it's it's just really great to hear everyone's feedback about what you're doing at Hot Topic. And it is creating a very special place for individuals, um, for workers, for customers alike. Um, one question we have is, how have you seen this culture that you've cultivated within your employees then impact the mental health of your customers? And, you know, what has, has this looked like as you've prioritized it within your staff? Well, listen, I, I, I think when I look at that, when you have an environment mm -hmm. where people are truly excited to show up and essentially come as you are, there's naturally since that threshold is already being met, okay, and people are happy to be at work, that's subsequently going to trickle down to the customers. I like to say customers will never love the product until the employees love it first, okay? And if you don't create an environment to where our employees are going to love working at Hot Topic and essentially love, you know, the product that we sell at Hot Topic and love the people who shop at Hot Topic, um, how are we supposed to have a sustainable business? Well, it's just not going to work, right? So, um, as I've seen us lean in more into the mental health scope, as we started to create this culture of, um, of employees who really enjoy showing up at work, what that does is that just what you often find is you often see the repeat customer and more repeat customers who are coming into stores, seeking out those managers and those employees who work there because they know what that experience is going to look like. It's predictable. It's exciting. It's fun. It's everything that you would want within a business. So leaning into that, it's only going to make your employees happier, which is subse subsequently going to make the, uh, the customers happier. And honestly, make them want to come back. We have a lot of repeat customers and we have a lot of new customers who are right. like, oh my God, I've never been in here. And this was one of the greatest experiences that um, I've had within a retail establishment. I didn't know. Um, so I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think when you see kind of the correlation between the two and how it plays out on the back end. I think it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I would add to that, that um, I hear this all the time. I can't give you numbers again, but a manager will reach out to me and say, hey, Joe, I was just to let you know that uh, one of our employees was talking about the Hot Topic Foundation. And as soon as they mentioned music and mental health, we got a $20 donation or a $200 mm -hmm. donation. Yep. Or one time I got a $1,000 donation. I was floored and he happened to be a professor at, I um, can't remember now, Northridge, I believe, and thought it was so cool what we were doing. So that's how I think it trickles down to when right. our people didn't really have the time and they don't always have the time when they can talk about the foundation and what we do, what we support. Um, people go, this is pretty damn cool and this is great. And they give us more money, you know, and, that, and that's the reason why 
you know, I don't like a lot of PR about the foundation. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a PR hound, but I like it for the standpoint that we want to raise more money to do more good. Right. Because as I mentioned to you, Susie, and, and you didn't hear this, uh, Jackie, but our CEO said, I want Hot Topic to be known as a company that does good work. Right. So that's cool. Yeah, that is, it is admirable. And, you know, imagine if every company had that same uh, mindset, what our world could look like. Right. Um, Another question we had come through for our hot topic folks is have you noticed that employer employees working at hot topic approach their managers more about their mental health um, or if they're struggling and feel safe doing so as opposed to if they might be working at a different company? I, I think so because I hear it all the time. Number one, Derek may feel differently, so I'll take the lead on this one, but I hear that all the time. Our manager will reach out and say, hey, Joe, I have somebody who's really struggling. This is the information I gave them. What other information can we give them? What are the resources? Are there out there that you're aware of? I've had such great support from the Trevor Project and Mental Health America. I, Mental Health America is act, America, actually, American Predis, who is my partner in climate, MHA. She's actually called district managers and store managers for me because I don't know what's available in Massachusetts or wherever. <clears throat> so the support has been wonderful. So, um, and we've, it's just another conversation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, obviously even resources handles LOAs and we have a specialist who does that, Marcel. And so when someone's struggling, we'll say, okay, we'll contact Marcel. And if you have to take some time, we'll give you some time. And sometimes you just give them unofficial time off to take care of themselves because they need to. Because again, as Derek also knows, we're getting into this, you know, the fourth quarter, which is the most stressful time for people in retail or service industries, because there's not a lot of time off for, for us right. during that time, especially the store folks. It's a little bit different in HQ, but especially the store folks. So sometimes they need a, a mental health break. So yep. yes. Yep. And people are very comfortable talking about it because we respect their opinions and their feelings. Absolutely. I That's a Great point. I think one other thing, I'll hand it over then to you, Susie, but no, no one, one comment I saw in the chat from someone um, was just admiring what you're doing at Hot Topics and made the comment that a big part of creating that psychological safety in the workplace is encouraging folks to be their authentic selves and that you've done such a great job with that. And when you're able to be your authentic self, to have that trust with your manager, to know mm -hmm. that when you bring a concern, they're going to address that, that's mm -hmm. what creates that psychological safety at work that's so important. And then they feel comfortable saying, you know, I do need a break, right. where a lot of individuals don't feel comfortable expressing that they might need a break with worry that that could affect their job or affect right. their performance review and things like that, um, where what you're doing is thinking about the individuals beyond the employees. Um, and like you stated so great, Derek, with so many examples, when you're able to do that, you create more productive and more engaged and more successful employees in the long run. Absolutely. 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 If I just may, just yeah. one thing, um, and something that I bring up, it's it's an it's it's an accounting term called uh, uh, opportunity cost. Okay, and if you're in a position to where you are turning people over left and right, you are going to be facing a lot of opportunity cost. So there's no competing interests, in as far as I'm concerned, in terms of your business and Mental Health America, and um, or just mental health resources. Period. The two mm -hmm. go hand in hand. Because the more people that you're losing, that means that's the more people that you're having to hire and then subsequently train and get them ready. And you're on this never ending cycle. It's I'm all about sustainability, I'm about authenticity, and I'm about creating that type of work environment because I know that it's a win win. It's a win win on both sides. And I think that's what we ultimately want to strive for win win solutions, right? right. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. But the only thing I was going to add to um, the great question about, are you hearing, you know, are the stories being bubbled up? Are you, are you hearing about challenges is it, you know, for me kind of puts a, a, a pin in the idea that if you're not hearing those stories, 
that's a concern, right? Yes. Because yes. we all know mental health conditions and experiences are ubiquitous. We all have them in some way, shape or form. Everyone's dealing with something. Um, life situations, you know, um, affect our mental health, stress affects our mental health. Everything, you know, in our life could be seen as, you know, a potential challenge that we're facing. So again, back to the, you know, the spaces and the environment that you've created to allow those, those real life challenges to bubble up. That's how you know you're you're doing the real work, right? Right. You know, right, and right. I have companies still asking me all the time, like, what are the liability of 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 you know having these conversations in in, right. in the workplace? And I I send it right back over the fence and I say it's a liability if you're not because right. Right. you know it's you have to think of the the risk around not having the conversation. There's there's no liability, you know, for my HR professionals out there, loosen up a little bit, people number one. <laughs> Most HR people, I'm not a fan of because they're too strict. That's why I fit in so well here at Hot Topic because I do what I want to do most of the time. <laughs> they just let me because they trust me, thank God. But you know, it's true. I have people call me and talk to me all the time about challenges. My favorite saying is, "We don't know what people go home to at night. You know, we mm -hmm. see them on the surface at work. We see them. I see, you know, I see people on the surface. We don't know what they go home to." I know what I struggle with. We all have struggles, as you said, Susie, and thank you. We all we all struggle with something. And none of us are out there being perfect. We're not, you know, godlike. So it's okay to have those conversations and give people, you know, direction or re our resources or get or hand them over the resources. I say, tell people, I'm not a psychologist, but I know there are some resources out there for you. Or there's an organization you can seek out or talk to Mental Health America. And that's why I know for a fact, you know, you have all been such a great partner because I have had America call people, you know, and say, right. hey, you know, I Joe called and said you needed some resources. Here they are. And that just speaks volumes to me that you can be real and care about people. I will say that until yeah. the day I die. Yeah. Showing that you care about people is not a bad thing. Exactly. It's it's so important to not shy away from those conversations because I love what you said, Susie. They if you're not hearing it you know, then that's, that's the problem because mental health is something that we all have. And at some point, mm -hmm. most people go through a period of time where they're going to struggle with it and they need that extra support and um, that help. And so it's just wonderful to see how Joe, you and Derek have created um, within Hot Topic, just this great organization that recognizes the importance of mental health within your employees, within yourselves, and within your customers, and how you've really done that. So thank you so much for sharing all of that with us today. I see in the chat um, a comment, it's a win-win on both sides when mental wellness is our bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, that's from Sinclair. Thanks for joining us, Sinclair. It's so good to see you here with us. Um, but it is so true, and that is um, just one thing that I'll be taking out from today and one comment that was made in a webinar yesterday that I was in um, hosting was that you don't have to be a therapist to be therapeutic. And I think that goes back to what you said, Joe, of, you know, we can provide support in the ways that we can within our employees, right. within our capacity. And once it goes beyond our capacity, that's when you're referring out and providing um, additional resources and information. And you all are just doing such a fantastic job at Hot Topic by doing that. So as thank you. Used, as my mother thank used you. to say, it doesn't cost anything to be nice and decent to people. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love well, it. thank you all so much for the incredible discussion this last <laughs> hour for being here with us and for the work that you're doing. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you for your amazing questions in the chat, your great comments, the resources and information you've shared. We've appreciated you being here with us. We encourage you to visit MHA's Workplace Wellness Resource Center. Um, that will be included in your follow-up email. So if you weren't able to get that link out of the chat, don't worry, it will be sent over to you. Um, and please feel free to contact MHA at workplace at mhanational.org if you have additional questions or comments about the new information that's on the Resource Center, about the Bell Seal um, application, or anything regarding your workplace mental health. Um, so thank you so much. And just as a reminder, you can complete that post-webinar survey to give us some feedback. We really appreciate that. You'll get a 10% 
percent promotion code for the MHA store that will come via email within the next week, along with the recording. So thank you all so much for being here. We really hope you found this discussion valuable and um, that you have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week, and that you all take care of yourselves, your mental health um, through the holiday season. As we know, it can be a little extra stressful time for everyone. Thank and a you. big thank you to thank Susie you and Taylor and Joe and Derek. It has been wonderful having you. Um, thank you all so, so much. Thanks so much, Thanks. everybody. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Take care.